Today on Logan Lee Adventures, we explore Mendoza, which is a city and a province out west of Argentina. Oh, and expect a lot of yummy food and a lot of great wine too. Bon dia from Mendoza! So we flew in this morning all the way from Buenos Aires to Mendoza, which is the west side of Argentina and we're going to be spending a few days in this beautiful city and exploring it around. So if you know a little bit about Mendoza, well actually if you know a little bit about Argentina, you know that this is the wine region and how wine is such a huge part of Argentina's culture here and most of it actually comes from Mendoza and this region here. So we're going to be exploring definitely there's going to be some wine involved. Of course there's going to be meat involved but also you can check out what this leafy lush wide avenue city has to offer. Autumn in Mendoza is so beautiful. Look at all these explosions of colors. This is Plaza España, one of the satellite plazas in the city. There's many plazas, so it's not built like a traditional Spanish city where there's one plaza, a cathedral, and that's the heart of the city. But there's many, many plazas in Mendoza. And this is just stunning, especially during autumn. Okay, there's a whole monument up here too. This is such a beautiful square. It has like this Andalusian feel to it with the tiles. But it makes sense because that sculpture is gifted from Spain. That sculpture, even though gifted by Spain, it was gifted from the Franco era in the 1940s. And the thing is, is that you can see that one of the sculpture is taller than the other and the taller one is holding books. And that represents like knowledge, language, and that represents the mother, the motherland. I didn't say that. That represents Spain, the colonial land. And then the other woman has grapes and that's how she's holding and that just represents like she has the land and she's looking up to Spain. It's a little controversial because colonial politics but otherwise there's so much details in this square that makes it very very beautiful. I know Mendoza is so beautiful it's only so beautiful with all these trees. I cannot get over it. But the thing is, is that none of these trees are native to Mendoza. Mendoza, the area is a very dry, dry area. It's like right by the Andes and the Andes here, it's like super dry, there is not lush. There's no trees up in those mountains. There is no protection from the sun. Whereas here, there's so many trees. And so they got brought over from different parts of the world to Mendoza and mixing, making all these like tunnels of trees giving us shade and like the beauty here. The thing to also realize about Mendoza is that this is like an average day. Like the weather is super stunning and beautiful, but it is also because of the dryness, in recent years they have more issue because there's lack of rain here. And it doesn't help from the lack of rain that the mountains are here too so they mostly get the region mostly gets their water from the snow and depending on how much snow the mountains get and that's usually like one month out of the year but climate change in the past 12 years has affected that so as far as I mean Mendoza pretty okay with water but you drive 15 10 minutes outside of the city and in the summer months they really struggle with water here because of the lack of structure the growing population um, but otherwise beautiful
These things right here are called azequias, which are basically water canals to help water all of these trees. And again, that's why you can have a palm tree next to a pine tree because none of these trees are native here. A bustling city of wide, leafy avenues, atmospheric plazas, and cosmopolitan cafes, Mendoza is a trap. Even if you're foolishly only given a day or two exploring here, you're likely to be captivated by the laid-back pace of the city. Ostensibly, it's a desert town, though you wouldn't know it because of the aquinas, which are irrigation ditches, running beside the roads and glorious fountains adorning the plazas of Mendoza. middle of the city this is gorgeous this is a shopping area but because it's after 1 p.m. right now a lot of people are taking their siestas Mendoza is still a city that does siestas because it's still a little bit of a traditional conservative city in that case when it comes to siestas but wow We're at Estancia La Pasión, which basically sums up this place, the passion. Just look at this whole asado plate. Which is a mixture of different grilled meats, which then gives us just the right amount of little taste of everything here. Tiramisu, of course. I mean, it's so good. Okay, let's try it. Mm. This is proper tiramisu. It's so good. Oh my goodness. All the layers, so fluffy. This is the pedestrian street here. So it extends for a few blocks in Mendoza. And then, you see these little eggs? Apparently, those are Easter eggs. And those were gifted from the Croatian community in Mendoza for Easter because they painted it in different designs too. Which is really cute. <laughs> the central market of Mendoza and there's so many things that you can see and get here there's a lot of really great cold cuts that are available hung up here and then you can also get like fresh honey and jam too look at this and all these pastries too Now we're exploring Parque San Martin. So Parque San Martin was originally the kind of extravagant backyard for the affluent high society class in Mendoza. But then over time it has now become the huge city park. And it is, it is humongous. It literally, if you look on the map, Parque San Martin is about the same size as like half of or even more of Mendoza city which is really crazy if you think about it uh, so that gives us a lot of nature a lot of natural spaces to explore and just and this outdoor beauty around us wow there's 
a whole peaceful lake out here too. I mean, this park is humongous, but did not expect a whole lake in the middle of the park too. It's so nice though. Day two in Mendoza, and we're gonna kickstart day two outside of the city center in an up element of Mendoza called Lujan de Coyo, where all the wineries that Mendoza is known for are located. And also, there's also Maipu, but we're gonna be exploring Lujan today, and then we're gonna kickstart off at this gorgeous bodega called Bodega Via Monte. Which one do you get? Gracias. Before we start our guided wine tour through Guillaumont wineries, we're gonna be having lunch at the bodega here. I'm really excited because it is such a beautiful venue. You see the Andes Mountains up there? And all the wineries. And then all ready to start off with, they brought over selection of chocolate that we can try. So it has some edible flowers in it, which is so cool. <laughs> getting a little pinky from the red wine as expected but you know when at a winery <laughs> so our first dishes came out and we have a variation of a salmon mango puree in beet and as well as a modern interpretation of a umita which is a traditional northern dish I'm so excited. This is the beef de oyo. One of the courses that we got. Look how nice mm, Fantastic. Wow. Is it bad if I just take these ribs with my fingers? Because it's how ribs eat. It's supposed to be eating. <laughs> mm. Mm. Wow. That is incredible. <laughs> Y'all, how much wine is too much wine? This is literally our third, third pairing. Um, my face is getting redder and redder. I'm definitely feeling it a little bit more and more. But uh, cheers! I mean, Argentina. Oh, really good one. And then we also have the next course, which is this in between squash pumpkin cookies. <laughs> Oh, 
always after a seven course meal, gotta have an espresso. But I didn't imagine the espresso would be this big actually. But it's gonna we'll pick me up right away for our, our next step, which is the guided wineries ahead when we come on today. Me and wine, I'm like halfway to passing out with all the good food in Glucoma too. Mendoza is the epicenter of Argentinian wine industry, which it is world renowned. But what I love about the wineries here is that you can have a full meal, relaxation, along with the drinks. So there's quite a lot of things to do and see at the wineries, and there's so many to pick out. Strolling through the vineyards and while it's already harvested, I think it still looks pretty cool with the Andes Mountains just as the backdrop. And then you can see just how big this vineyard is. It like just keeps on going. Especially when you look out there, like how far the vineyard just reaches on either side. Even though most people would say that summer is the perfect time to visit Mendoza, I would say yes, it's really nice during the summer because that's when you can see all the vineyards green and in its prime. But autumn, I mean, come on, look at this. All these colors, you would never get in any other season. This is the perfect season to get a chilled, relaxed temperature. It's so cozy. Actually, it's kind of like hot, which is why I started to take off my jacket. But it's the perfect amount of climate on top of you get all these beautiful beautiful colors all around you i am loving autumn in mendoza this is museo provincial bellas de arza and it is such a grand museum. Look at all these beautiful pieces hosted in this century villa. It is stunning here. Wow. It is such an impressive space here with really great pieces as well. Apparently there's a Quite a quaint garden that we can go and see and check out. So let's do that. Stunning, especially these sculptures all around the gardens, too. Now, I wouldn't mind if this was my own family estate home. I'll move out in the middle of nowhere for it, for sure. I'm in the middle of nowhere, as in wine country for it. Oh, there's more sculptures in the gardens. That's a wrap on our time in Mendoza, but let me know what you think about this beautiful part of Argentina in the comments below. And give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already, because in the next vlog is my final adventure in Argentina. I mean, for now, that is. Until next time, Logie Bears.